Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Studio Live today. We are back. We're back in Cubasis that way again. And today we are going to start, we're going to set up our brand new song here in Cubasis. If it's your first time on the channel, my name's Pete. This is Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And uh, my comfort zone is GarageBand. It's what I do most of my music creation on. However, in the month of April, we are stretching our wings and we're going to be out here in Cubasis. And because the April month has officially started everywhere in the world now, not just here in Australia in the future, but everywhere, we're going to get cracking. Now, it is uh, April Fool's for a lot of you. Uh, and remember, around here, we don't tolerate fools. We pity them, just like Mr. T. And that's a very relevant reference because you have voted, you have told me that the song that we'll be producing here is going to be an 80s synth rock song. Uh, it's not going to sound anything like this. Reason being that this was just my kind of test thing there. Now, I've, I've changed that instrument, so that's sounding terrible there. So it's not going to be like that, but we are going to build this out. And in fact, in the last 24 hours, I asked you a second question, which is, we know it's going to be an 80s synth, synth, synth. This is going to be a fun month. It's going to be an 80s synth rock song, but what's it going to be about? And uh, I gave you five options. We had big hair, we had 80s nostalgia, 80s fashion, back to the future, we had a bunch of options in there. You have voted once again resoundingly for one particular thing. Hang around to the end because you're going to find out what that theme is going to be. But in this one, what we're going to be doing is actually learning again. If you caught the last couple of episodes, we're learning with the aid of our Cubasis manual. And yes, I'm reading the manual so you don't have to. So we can learn together and we can work out how we can use Cubasis to record the best that we possibly can. So let's dive into this here. We're at the point now where we are creating a song. So what better place to go to than create song here in the manual? And we're going to read about this. We're going to do creating a song and the project view here today. So we're going to do some learning. We're going to cram the learning in to start with. And then we're going to have a bit of a chat about the actual theme of this song. And I need your ideas because it's an interesting theme and I'm going to need a lot of help with, uh, with content that we need to put into this song lyrical ideas, mel melody ideas, rhythm ideas, what sort of instruments we choose. Again, this is going to be completely interactive, so keep following along at home and uh, we'll get this one done together. Creating a song in Cubasis, so creating your own piece of music from scratch following these simple steps. So you create a new project, you open the media bay, choose projects and tap on one of the empty project templates. Let's follow the bouncing ball, shall we? Let's do as Cubasis says. And do this. We, we can do this together. Uh, so we're going to go here to media. And we're here in the media bay. Projects. Uh, new project is where we're at at the moment. Now, I'm assuming that uh, I've done something wrong here. And I'm basically... Let's let's go back into one of these other projects. So we'll load my old one. Pete is learning project. I think this is what I did in my last tutorial. Yeah, that's where I was learning things. Uh, but new project... Yeah, so <laughs> instead of duplicating out, I've done something over the top of new project, but that's okay. I'm assuming that we can just hit this new project button here, and there you go. We can name our new project. So this is where we're going to get started. It is going to be, at the moment, it has no name, so it's just going to be 80s synth rock. Yes, you get to enjoy me saying synth for the entire month. There we go. Uh, 80s synth rock. It's blank, it's empty, it's got nothing here at the moment and it's open. We can tell that there in the media browser. So a little bit different from using things like GarageBand here, the way that we manage our files. And I'm sure we'll learn a heap more about file management as we continue on here in Cubasis. Let's jump back to our manual. Add some drum loops. Select the MIDI or audio category in Media Bay. Hit the preview button to listen to a loop. Drag the loop onto the track or double tap it to place it onto a new track. Let's do that, shall we? So we can do the audio or the MIDI, and we can find a drum loop. Let's do MIDI, and we'll do a drum loop. And uh, now it does say there's a preview button. I can't find the preview button. Am I missing something here? Or autoplay. No, it's not autoplay, but I thought there was a preview. And the other thing, I, I don't seem to have a scroll wheel mouse functionality. I can swipe up and down on my mouse, but my mouse scroll wheel is doing nothing. Now, look, I have just noticed that we do have 80s, an 80s beat. So, of course, we would go with this 80s beat intro. If we tap on that one, uh, yeah, again, we'll just put autoplay on. There's our 80s beat. There you go. Audition is at the bottom. Uh, is it somewhere down here? 
I mean, I know there's autoplay, but I don't know. There's no way to just play it. Anyway, thank you. Uh, by the way, thank you to all the folks who are here who helped me last time. We've got some pros in the house. We've got uh, we've got Synth Widow, uh, Joe over there at the sound test room in the house uh, helping us out here today. I'm sure we'll get some good advice because, again, I'm brand new to this stuff. I've used it once for one song ever. <laughs> so we can uh, double double tap, I think. Uh, we can put, yep, we'll throw that in there. Uh, it's got a two-bar loop there. And then we've got a whole bunch of extra bars here that we can play around with. Uh, so we'll just throw that in there for now and we'll just we'll build out a bit of a track. Now, do I loop by just doing this or is that just going to... No, that's not going to do anything. We'll undo that. Do we loop from the top? Uh, nope. Do we loop by tapping a loop button at the top here? You know what? We'll leave it at two for now. We're at two bars. We'll fo follow the manual, Pete. Go back to your manual and follow your manual. <laughs> here we go. Uh, so next, adjust the tempo. Now, this is important to know. So the tempo uh, display at the top allows for tempo and signature modifications. So let's modify our tempo and our time signature, shall we? Which is going to be sitting right up here, 120 BPM. Now, what, what's an 80s beat? I'm thinking maybe something around there. Like, let's tap it in. You know what I'm doing? It's the power of love. That's the kind of sort of thing or... Uh, it's simply irresistible if you want something a little bit faster. So something in between those two. So I'm reckoning about the 130 mark. We'll start with that. Again, this is this is all changeable. And I'm assuming we can tap in here and just dial it in. Can we? No? Can we just tap the tempo there or do we have to use the up and downsies? Looks like we have to use the up and downsies. Okay, we'll do it. Let's go 130 because it's a because it's a thing. It's a nice round number. Uh, cool. So we're sitting there, we've got our tempo and our time signature. I mean, it's got to be 4-4. Four, four. It's our first song, our first real song in Cubasis. We don't want to be messing about with any sort of weird time signatures. But the cool thing is that we do have some pretty radical time signatures in here that we can go with. We can change this. Uh, can we change it to the bottom to 8? We can do a 6-8, can we? We can do 2-4 up to 7-4. I'm hoping that we can do other things like 12-8 and funky things. We'll find out later. All right. And pre-count mode, one bar of pre-count. Yep, that looks all looks good. So we've got a tempo set. What next, Cubases? Tell me. Tell me how to feel. Tell me how to feel. Uh, yeah, a bit of, bit of Huey. A bit of Huey Lewis and or the news doing their thing. Uh, yeah, that, that's 80s, isn't it? Huey Lewis and the news? That's so 80s. All right. A load instrument. Select a MIDI track to create a new one. Tap the add button. Select MIDI. Tap the instrument icon and tap the instrument in the media bay list to load it. All right. Let's find us an 80s instrument. Now, Cubases people. Are there any are there any instruments within the what is it the microsonic that come to mind that we should be adding in here? So we're going to add a MIDI track by tapping here. Add. We're going to tap MIDI. Now it's given us the hip hop kit by default. We probably don't want the hip hop kit though by default. We want to change this. Yeah. Now if I can remember how to change it, that'd be good. There we go. We're in here. We can go to our microsonic, which is all of our built-in instruments. Now I've only just realised that as well as well. We got some auto scroll action going on. No hands. Look, mum, no hands. I don't know quite what I've done there. <laughs> it's you know what it is. <coughs> okay, that wasn't Cubasis' fault. That was um my my PC keyboard, my Mac keyboard was leaning on the uh, the scroll wheel of my um or the button actually of my keyboard here on uh, on my Magic keyboard. Anyway. So, uh, what's something 80s? Do we have any 80s instruments? Uh, I'll, I'll just pick one. Um, there's got to be something, probably something cool down in the bass section, yeah? So, we'll cl cl click or tap on bass here, and we'll find something. What's going to be some, some sort of E bass? Uh, a slappy E bass? Is that going to do it for us? No, maybe like a... Yeah, let's just throw down a, a, a pick bass here as well to go with our 80s beat intro. And uh, we'll play this and just see. All right, we'll bring our octave down here. I'm using a MIDI keyboard today, by the way, just to make it easier because last time using the screen, there is, of course, the keys that we can play here. And we can, we can adjust our keys by bringing this on down. So that is how we can play. Or... Sounds like summer loving. Summer loving. No, maybe not. Um, 
So let's just uh, record in some bass here. We'll do our little thingy here and hit the record button. Uh, I can do a better job of that, can't I? I'm practicing my undos. Uh, and this, this is obviously not necessarily going to be what's in the end, but this is how I'm going to learn by building out something here. There we go. So we just have our two bars there. We'll cut it off at the end of two bars. And we'll learn how to loop later. Maybe Cubasis will tell us. Uh, Oasis shirt, my collaboration friend Vero from Scotland loves them. I'm going to remake uh, their song and make it a rap. Oh, yeah. Uh, baby, you're going to be the one that sees me. Because after all, you're my wonder wall. Yep. Like that? <laughs> nothing like that? <laughs> Maybe nothing like that. Uh, All right, well, let's go back here. So we've loaded an instrument. We've done that. We're cool. Record instrument. Oh, I, I jumped ahead. <laughs> Tap the keys button. You can switch between the keyboard and the drum pads. Hit the record button. Wait for the counter to show 1.1.1 and start playing. Make sure your current track has recording enabled to stop recording. Hit the recording or play button. So yeah, I kind of jump ahead. And I also jumped ahead and used the undo button. So sorry, I, I didn't follow. I didn't RTFM. And I didn't actually read that bit. All right, let's add some audio though, because we do need to learn how to do that. Tap the plus add button and select audio to create a new audio track. Record it using your microphone. Uh-oh. Uh, okay, so I don't have a microphone. Oh, yes, I do. Here, here's a microphone I have handy. I was about to say I don't have a microphone plugged in, but I did grab one just beforehand in case in case Cubase has told me I had to learn how to record audio and it did so I'm lucky so I'm plugging in here once again I'm using my Steinberg UR22C look it's my favorite interface you might think Pete you're a bit of a Steinberg fanboy in this series well I'm a Steinberg fanboy all the time I've been using uh, Steinberg interfaces for the longest time and if you go down there to my gear guide studiolivetoday.com slash gear uh, you'll see all my recommendations, including the Steinberg UI22C and this little baby here. This is my uh, Audio-Technica AT2020, my favorite vocal mic. So this is probably what I'll use to record some vocals. And because it's 80 synth rock, I'll need some nice, crisp, clean vocals. It's not going to be a super heavy rock song. So using a, a condenser microphone like this one should be all good in the hood. All right, so let's learn how to do this now. We'll go, we'll pop that away. Uh, by the way, yes, uh, I'm using my Mac to display the screen, and I'm using an app called Reflector 4 to uh, to display my iPad screen here. So if you're wondering how the behind-the-scenes stuff works, that's how it's all going down there. So let's follow the instructions again. We're going to go Add. This time we're adding audio, and there you go. We've got a blank audio track here. Now, it didn't really tell us this uh, in terms of how to actually oh, set, set our monitoring, monitoring, but there you go. We have We've set our monitoring there. And I believe if we just uh, zoom the track in here a little bit downwardsly, uh, th there is a spot where you can select which audio input you're using. I just can't remember where it is. Uh, is it under this little star? No. It, oh, it's under routing here, isn't it? Of course it is. So there you go. We're using mono input, and we've got our two-channel input, our UR22C. So if we go to channel two, that's our second channel, which is where I usually plug in my guitar, and I usually have my channel one set here under routing. For my microphone and then if we hit the monitor button there we are boom, 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 boom. so let's just play this and see what sort of I mean again this is just all to test but what sort of audio we record here I think you know what I'm gonna say if you've been around the channel you know what I'm gonna say here so let's hit the record button we get one beat in oh oh yeah girl okay don't ask don't ask about the yeah girl thing it's a long story so we can go back to there. We can have our little beat here. Why is it not playing? I don't record. Oh, is it because monitoring and records enabled? Does it not play back then? What are you doing? Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Microphone down. All right, where's well, success? We've done it. Uh, hello to Jade Star, by the way. Uh, other folks who are here. We've got Stu Cash in the house. We've got Ed Z, uh, Bonesborough Beach Boy. Uh, hello to uh, N Ezekiel. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have an idea. One of my favorite new names that I've seen around the channel. Um, uh, Sean Chandler. Hello to you. Patrick Chandler. We've got Chandler. Double, double your Chandlers. Uh, and I hope you're all doing well. Uh, let's come back to the manual. <coughs> Excuse me. Need more coffee need to stop coffeeing with more coffee 
And Dogbert, there you go, another cool name. Love me some Dilbert, Dogbert, great. Mm. All right, so we've added our audio and we are ready to go to the next section. Different recording methods. Drag the playhead to where you want to start recording and activate the cycle button to play or record in a loop. This sounds like fun. Now I've only got got two bars to experiment with here, but if I wanted to uh, just practice my yeah girl over and over again, I'm assuming I I can get that and do my cycle here. And is that just going to, yeah, girl, yeah, girl, yeah, girl, yeah, girl. There you go. The hit of the the year. 2021 is going to be all about yeah, girl. Um, So I guess we can then, now that I've thrown my microphone to the ground in a fit of rage, I'll grab it again. And does this mean we can just do a cycle record? If I wanted to perfect my yeah, girl, do I just record it over and over again? I don't, this is all experimental. There's the thing. Yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. You know what I don't have? I don't have the track enabled to record or the monitoring on. But, 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 but. But let's go. So, yeah, it's, it's cool to be able to do this little cycle bit here. Yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. Oh, I forgot to stop, and I was happier with the second to last one. <laughs> So I've got a little six here. So is this meaning that there's six different versions in here? This, this is, I'm going next level here. I don't think it, I don't think it wanted me to do any of that. Uh, I'm going to undo it there. But I will, we will learn as we go through how do we use that. But it's good to know that we've got that cycle recording function there and how to turn it on and off by using the button there. Oh, let's turn off that. Hey, you get to see all the things that are going on in the world. There we go. Got that off again. So uh, let's go. Next section, please. Uh, Cubase is manual. What do we do next? Uh, right, so that's the way you can do track inspector. Ooh. Yes, inspector. Inspect my track. All right, what's a track inspector? Open the expector, expector, inspector for advanced options such as modifying your instrument, adding your effects, and adding track volume pan. Ah, so that's, I think I already had my inspector open. I was ready, I was ready, I, I was pre inspected. So I'm thinking this is what they call the track inspector. What an interesting name. I would have called it like your, okay, I don't know what I would have called it, track settings, track options, track parameters. I don't know, anything but track inspector. Excuse me, track inspector, tickets please. All right, so that's our track inspector. And uh, as I've already kind of noted, you get different options with audio and you get additional options with MIDI because obviously you can choose like your instrument with your MIDI and MIDI effects, things like that are not relevant to your audio tracks, but everything else seems to be about the same. All right, cool. So that is my track inspector. Now I know the terminology to use. We can inspect our tracks till the cows come home, can't we? Um, got a question here. <laughs> can you edit certain parts in a vocal recording with a different effect without altering the other vocals? Good question. Yes, I think, because you can use um, automation of effects within Cubasis. And that's something that we will be experimenting. It's probably next level. It's not going to be in this one, but you have both in- insert effects and you have send effects and you also have automation which allows you to not only automate your volume like you can in things like GarageBand, but you can automate pan, mute, and sends. And I'm assuming that means you can also uh, use effects. So your send level, I'm assuming that's where you're sending that effect. You can bring that in and out. Not sure if you can do the same for insert effects. We will find out when we get to our when we get to our exploration of uh, automation. But yeah, if you do have questions, I probably can't answer them. Not yet anyway. But uh, I will lock them away and we'll uh, get to them in the future. And uh, thank you, Alex Backus. By the way, it's folks like Alex Backus who help us. No, I'm not going to even go there. Uh, We do the joke, but Doug stole my joke. So it's not fun anymore. I have to have a new joke. Uh, Good morning from Korea. Be a very early morning in Korea, but thank you for joining in. Let's go to our next section. We're going to keep moving here because we've got all the time and very little to do. Not switch that, reverse it. Uh, Next is affair events. The notes and waveforms you have created are arranged within events. You can move them around, fade them in or out, edit them by double tapping them, and much more. Okay. Uh, uh, That doesn't really tell me much about what I can and can't do, but we can, yep, so we can double tap them. Okay, that's cool. So, yeah, we've got our thing here. We can uh, make changes to things. We can reverse audio. We've got normalized functions in here. We've got, now, is that quantization? I'll snap to grid. I was going to say, is that quantization of waveforms? That'd be kind of cool. We've got fade ins and outs. We've got normalization there. And um, yeah, then that's for our audio and then for our MIDI. 
we'll go into our piano roll editor here where we've got all of our standard. And to be honest, a lot of people have said to me, Pete, you're, you're a madman. You're using Cubasis. It's, it's piano roll editor is just pure evil. Uh, I don't know. I think it's got potential here. I think it's just very different from other piano roll editors I've used. So it's gonna take some getting used to, understanding how the select button here works, that you can uh, select multiple with that on, but if you have that off, then you select and you just get the one. And uh, yes, yeah, it's got all the same sort of functionality, but I have noticed it is a little bit fiddly trying to grab it. <laughs> I tend to just flick things around and make mistakes. So my undo button will be my friend for that. So there you go, there's our events. We've got all of our events that we can play around with. What's next? Tell me, what's next? Uh, how it works with InterApp. I have an issue with Bias FX2 and Cubasis 3. We'll be playing with that because I'm sure I'll record some guitars. I don't necessarily use Bias FX, but uh, we can explore that. We'll definitely be using some Tone Bridge probably because uh, Tone Bridge is cool. We'll be able to find our fave 80s band, whatever we're trying to emulate and uh, get that tone going on here. I'm trying, I'm going to try to use all the Cubasis stuff, the Cubasis add-ons that I've got here, the Waves plugins, and just some free plugins. I don't want to do a whole bunch of outside of Cubasis stuff for this series anyway. Uh, that can be in the future. Mix your song. The mixer manages all your tracks, volume, pan, effects, and other parameters. Each channel in the mixer represents one track. Let's go check out our mixer. So our mixer is under this Wii button in the top left corner. What was that noise? Uh, one of my apps was talking to me. Who knows? Uh, so here's our mixer. At the moment, we've only got the three tracks. So we can tap on the tracks and we've got all of our options here. I have already noted and we talked briefly that you can make it small if you just want to do some volume fading there. You can make them medium so you've got access to your mutes and your pans and your, your read and writes for your automation, etc. And then you've got your Excel, which gives you, uh, what does it give you? Just the, the DB uh, numbers there. So you can see like your, your zero and your 12 and your, your actual your actual uh, levels that you can do there. And the panning, took me a while to work this out, is up the top here. So you can double tap to center pan and you can pan to the right or the left, double tap again. And uh, here you've got your routing. So you've got your outputs and you can even group the tracks in here, which is pretty darn cool. And uh, what's this zero? I think that's, uh, oh yeah, so, so that tells you the volume. And I would hope, can you just dial in a volume setting? doesn't seem to have a whole lot of dialing in. I think everything is a bit tactile. You have to move the thing. But I wasn't sure. I thought you can't sort of enter a pan value. You just have to tap it and get there. And the same with your volume. You can't just enter a volume value. I may be wrong on that. Cubasis 3 Lovers, <laughs> which would be a weird website online. Hey, welcome to Cubasis3Lovers.com. Uh, you can let me know if that's not the case. So we've got our three tracks here. If we want to start leveling these out, again, we can be playing these. Oh, oh. And that's vo vocal yeah, to our oh, And we haven't got our... This is where I think having your loop uh, option here or whatever that was called would be handy because hopefully this will just play that over and over again. You can get your level. Oh, oh. Yeah, girl. Oh, oh. And we need to... Yeah, girl. Get our drums up a bit, bass oh, down a bit. Oh. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Oh, oh. There you go. That's going to be cool. Um, <laughs> uh, we're going to add add more than eight bars. Yes, we can add more than eight bars right off the gate. This is the thing. It's not like GarageBand where it hides the ability to add more. You can just uh, add and add and add. I haven't quite worked out the sections and like how we can manage sections and things like that. But we will display. We will discover this. We're going to explore it. That's why I'm using. That's why I'm reading the m manual because uh, if it's not in the manual, the one thing about the manual be better. The one thing about the manual is it's very comprehensive and uh, I'm sure it's got a lot of stuff in here that I wouldn't find if I was doing it on my own. So our song is mixed. It's ready to go. Mix down. Cubase saves your work automatically. So there is. So all there is left to do is export your finished project, open the media bay and select the mix down category. Choose your desired, just desired file type and the project will appear on the file list after the mix down is completed. All right. Let's do exactly that, shall we? So we're going to go to our media bay, which is this one up here. I do like the modular layout, by the way. I like having the media, the keys, the mixer, and then just being able to get rid of them all like that. I do find that quite useful. And what do we need? Mix down. So we're in the city. Hit the create mix down. So we'll mix it down as a WAV file, 80 synth rock. Now, uh, Doug at the sound test room has told me, don't do this one, but uh, you can do the mix down between locators which in this one I can just do because there's no effects on this yet, so there'll be no effects tail. I'm not going to normalise, and let's start our mix down. I've mixed down my first track. 
Okay, and it's popped it here in my mix down. Can I then share it from here? I believe I can. Share. There we go. Do you believe in? And it uh, looks like it's got audio share integration. Or we can go to more and uh, we can just send it. Jay, do you want a copy of this? <laughs> uh, so we can send it to wherever we like. So if you don't use audio share, you can just save to files. Uh, I do like the fact that we have direct audio share integration here, though, because I use audio share. So let's share to audio share. If you don't use audio share, by the way, it's about a $4 app. If you're an audio producer on iOS, you kind of want to get audio share. It does a lot of good things. Cubase three wants to open audio share. Do it, dude. Yeah, I got a lot of trash because I haven't cleaned out my audio share for a while. And there it is. And you can see it's got a nice bit of headroom because I didn't mix it too loud. So this is the beautiful part. Yep, GarageBand users are just shaking their head and fist in anger right now because if this was a GarageBand track, that normalization function that we didn't select, that's selected by default. You can't change that behavior. So it would have just brought our waveforms up to zero dB. You can then just turn them down and master. It's not the end of the world. But here we've got our 80 synth rock track and it sounds like this. Oh, oh. Yeah, girl. Now I have noticed one thing here. Look down here. This is 16 bit and 48 kilobyte, kilobyte, KBP. <sighs> Try that again. This is a 16 bit bit depth and 48K sampling rate. That's not what I want. We don't want no 16 bit. So I think I've forgotten to do what we did yesterday in the show. And that was to actually set my settings. I thought I'd set my setup settings to always be 24 bit here. But no, it appears maybe you have to set this project by project. And it seems to have defaulted back to 16 bit and to 48. So maybe there's somewhere I can set that to always default. Oh, convert audio files. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so because I've already created some audio files, it's now converting them to 24 bit and 44.1. I use that all the time just because. So now I've, I've set that to that on this project. We should be all good. But yeah. And was it the same with this? Yeah, I think. Oh no, we're in tablet mode. So a lot of these seem to stay the same. Maybe it just didn't save out those settings for some reason. I'm not sure. You know what? You have not seen anything that I've just done because I've had that up there the whole time. Yes, this is why you check that screen, Pete, not that screen. Because if you look at that screen, you don't know what people are seeing. Let's do that again, shall we? Okay, if you want to export the, the, the beauty of live, when people say, are you, do you really do this live? <laughs> yeah, I'd really do this live. You can tell. Media. Uh, just, just go back and erase it. I, I probably won't edit that out for those watching on the replays, but I apologize. I might do just to do you a solid because it would it's a bit embarrassing. All right, here we are. We're in mix down. We've got 80 synth rock. We can tap share. And now, here's what I was saying before that you heard in audio mode, but you didn't see the video of. So you can share to audio share. You can use the more button and you can share it around to wherever you like. You can save it to files. You've got your standard share sheet, just like you do everywhere else. But the beauty thing is we can share directly to audio share. And this time, <laughs> see, I did that purposely because I knew I'd do it again. This time we should find that our export is, see, it's still 16 bit 48. Okay. That's weird. Why is it still 16 bit and 48? Because uh, I did I did change it, didn't I? Didn't I? All right, let's go back to there. Because this is what I was talking about that, again, you didn't see, is that we went into our setup here and we went to project and we've changed this to 44.1 and to 24 bit. And that's all been set up. So that should, and it asked me if I wanted to convert it based on this, and I said yes. So why don't we... Let's just go to our projects. And if we just open, go back to this other project and then back to this one, maybe it just needed to save in or something. So there we are. Now, if we go to media and mix down uh, that one. Oh, no. Oh, hang on. Oh, no, 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 no. You know what I did? Okay, here's a trap. Trap for young players like me uh, is that what I did I actually didn't remix it down. I just grabbed the initial export and then redid it. There you go. <laughs> yes, manuals manuals need to be removed manually. Saga, that's classic. Well done. Uh, manuals do need to be removed manually. So <laughs> let's go back to this. So mix down. Go to media and mix down. So what I did here, the problem I did is I just used this one again. 
but this isn't going to remix it down. We have to go create mix down and create a new mix down. So we're mixing down between locators. We're not having the effects trail on. This is all the stuff you missed last time. Uh, there's our name of our mix down. We'll hit the start. There you go. Now we've got a second one. And now this is the one. And you can see, you can already see that it's 24 bit because it's a much larger file. We can now share and we can now go to audio share. And uh, boom. So it'll look exactly the same, but yay, 24 bit 44.1. And in case you're wondering, I did explain it yesterday, but the reason I've gone 24 bit 44.1 is that's what I use in GarageBand. That's what I use in all of my audio creation everywhere. It's just, it's a good habit to get consistent with what you're using. If you're using one particular type of file format, you're gonna save yourself some headaches and some hassles and some syncing problems if everything you do is the same. And because I've always used this in GarageBand and I may wanna, hey, we may wanna show in one of these videos, there's a lot of cool 80s sounds in GarageBand. We may wanna bring some of that stuff over here, export out of GarageBand, bring those loops in here into Cubasis, this will be the way to do it. So now, oh, oh, yeah, girl. <laughs> we can harmonize with ourselves. <laughs> All right, back to Cubases and back to our manual. Manual, we'll manually bring up the manual and then we'll be good to go. So share your work. Okay, I already did this. I jumped the gun. Sorry, Cubases 3. I already did what you were going to tell me to do. So I've already done the share and we've shared that out there. So that's pretty good. I, I did give, uh, I reached out to Steinberg uh, overnight between last show and this show and just said, I did do these couple of videos. I, I, look, I did say a few things. My sense of humor is a little dry, so please don't be offended by the things that I said, but they were they were super cool about it. So, uh, and uh, I, I told them about the 16-bit thing because we, we mentioned yesterday that when we're in the setup menu here, that it keeps talking about uh, that you should be at 16-bit. Where was it? Now I can't find it. Maybe they fixed it overnight. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, pro, we recommend using 44 or 48 at 16 bit. So I basically said to him, look, that was cool for five years, 10 years ago, but I reckon these days I would always recommend 24 bit because all of your, pretty much every bit of audio gear, apart from <clears throat> a few entry level uh, interfaces made by a company we won't name that starts with B, they're, they're 24 bit audio. So you want to go with 24 bit if you can. Anyway, there you go. Creating a new song. Was it easy? Yeah, kind of. When, when Pete displayed the right screen, it was pretty easy. So create a new project, you go to the media bay, you choose projects and you tap on a template. It then saves it out, give it a name. You can add in drum loops by just finding your loop and bringing it on in. You can change your tempo. You can load up instruments using the MIDI instruments that are built in. You can record your instruments using the keys or by using a MIDI keyboard mm. like we did here today. You can add audio and record your Hey Girls to your heart's content. You can use different recording methods. I do like that one. I do like the cycle recording. I think I'm going to use that quite a bit, at least for playing back and mixing, if not for recording. Uh, we've got our track inspector. I still think there's a better name for that, track inspector. We're not inspecting it. It's your options. It's your settings. Anyway, you got your events, uh, which are your notes and your waveforms. You can mix your song, uh, which we showed with your volume and your panning and your effects and whatnot. You can mix it down and then you can share your work. So at a very simple level, we're pretty good to go here, yeah? We're totally here to go. <laughs> I, I, I thought I'd, I'd go one thing at a time, Kim. I didn't want to overwhelm them and make them uh, make them really dislike me. So I just said, uh, I just said about the, uh, that. I didn't say the metronome, but yeah, tell you what, this metronome, as soon, I'm, I'm putting a drum loop down and recording to that because this metronome, man, I tell you what. Oh, oh. Yeah, girl. Oh. Yeah, not cool. Not cool. <laughs> I don't know, like Cubasis fans are just probably so used to it that you just don't even think about it now. But for me, there you go. Um, is your live almost done? I have beats to make, right? You need to get away. Well, it is, but you don't want to go too far away because uh, we've got something pretty special coming up after this one that uh, you might you won't want to miss. You won't want to miss out on that one. In fact, I better get my get my links ready. Or Jade, if you've got a link ready to drop there, go ahead and do that because uh, we've got. Uh, in fact, I'll show you what we've got. I'll show you this, and then we'll uh, we'll jump into our next section. Uh, it should bring this up. Yeah, look, it's it's brought it straight up because it knows it knows what I like to watch, and it knows what a narcissist I am, and that I'll definitely want to watch myself. So immediately after this show, look at what we got here. We got Jade. We got me. And we got the one and only Doug Woods from the Sound Test Room. Look, I haven't even given it a like here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a like and I'm going to set a reminder for it right now. And I'm going to do you a solid. I'm going to copy this. And wherever you are on Facebook or YouTube 
or Twitch right now, you're going to get yourself a, a link. It's going to be thrown right down there and uh, you'll be able to uh, join us because in, as you can see there, in 24 minutes. So I'll finish up this show in about 10 minutes and then uh, we'll just have a little break. You can grab yourself a beverage and you can settle in for the Jester's Court April Fool's Day. And to be very honest, I have little to no idea what is going on on this show. So I don't know what to expect. So uh, I can't even tell you what it'll be except that it'll be Jade, it'll be the wonderful Doug Woods, and it'll be myself. And uh, yeah, who knows what Jade will subject Doug and I to. Um, yeah, but you'll find out very soon. All right, you've waited long enough. You've been very patient, and it is time now to reveal the voting for what this song is going to be about. So let's bring up my community tab. So once again, if you are not aware of where you can vote on all of the things that are going to happen, because this is going to be a community-based song. We're going to get the Studio Live Today community to help me vote on what goes into this song. Yeah. So what is it going to, what does that mean? Well, it means that here on the community tab, if you go to my channel, so go to Pete Johns, go to the uh, community tab here, and you'll get things like you'll find out that uh, this, this guy here, Matt, Matthew's Garden and his amazing new tune called That's Okay. We'll be featuring that on a certain show tomorrow. Just as a little hint, uh, if, you, if you catch your music live, you'll see that in its, uh, not in its entirety, but you'll see a clip of that. It's very, very cool. Uh, but here it is. So the community has spoken. Uh, 80s synth rock is the genre for my April song, but what will it be about? Well, before we, we bring it down and reveal, I'm going to jump in here to, uh, I'm going to jump in here to my mobile so you can't see, but I can. There were five options. Coming in at number five, and this surprised me, with just 6% of the votes, we had nearly 200 votes, 199 votes, was 80s fashion. So people didn't want 80s fashion. Coming in at number four, this surprised me. I thought this was going to be a front runner and maybe win. Coming in with 10% of the votes in number four, big hair. I kind of wanted it to be big hair, but this is it. This is the community. You vote. You tell me. Uh, number three, coming in with 16% of the votes, was... And again, I kind of thought this would be a fun one, but an 80s synth rocker missing home. So I could have done like a story about a Howard Jones type character that was out on the road with his guitar and uh, was missing being home. But we won't be doing that. Number two, with a, a respectable 23% of votes, 80s nostalgia in general. So just a general, let's talk Rubik's Cubes, let's talk Neon, didn't come in. You know what you resoundingly wanted? Let's reveal it, shall we? Yes, there it is. Back to the Future. Now, I threw this out in the last time because Back to the Future just happens to be my favorite movie series of all time. So I actually like Back to the Future 2 the best, but that's, of course, in the future. So that's not about the 80s. But the topic of this song will be Back to the Future. So time to get your thinking caps on because the, the question that we'll be voting on between now and tomorrow, we're actually going to name this sucker. Because once we have the name, it's like Dilbert. I saw Dogbert before. It's like the Gruntmaster 3000. Uh, it's like, the first thing we need is a name, like the pointy haired boss. And it's like, no, that's actually the last thing you generally need. But we do need a working title. So what will the working title be? So if you're here live, you can throw your ideas in the chat here right now. But if you're watching on the replay, even better, you can just throw them in the comments. And we'll leave the comments open for a couple of hours after this show. Uh, I'll give you a reminder in the in the next show with Doug and, and Jade, and maybe we'll get some of Doug and Jade's ideas. But Back to the Future, it's got to be something around Back to the Future, and that's what we're going to name it. So is it going to be called Biff is a Jerk? Will it be called, um, I don't know, Pepsi Free is a weird name for a soft drink? I don't know, something Back to the Future related. Probably focusing around the first movie in the 1980s. Or maybe, maybe we can even stretch it out to, to do it about the, the alternate 1985 universe that they come back to in the second movie. I don't know. Clearly, many of you love Back to the Future and the series of movies as much as I do. And it's going to be super fun because there's so many themes on that. It could just be called Don't mm, Your Mum, right? Because that's, again, the premise of the whole Back to the Future thing is that... Yeah, it's a little bit inappropriate. So, uh, yes, don't when you go back in time, stay away from your parents. There you go. Uh, oh, J Kim's only seen only seen the movies once. Yeah, DeLorean. There you go. There's got to be some DeLorean references in there. Uh, Kim says I kind of wanted it to be big hair too. I did too. Uh, yeah, I had a perfect. Uh, I had a perfect one. Perfect. Uh, uh, perfect CD cover for big hair, which I may still use anyway. 
<laughs> but uh, now that it's back to the future, I'll probably have to do the, the something different. So in terms of ideas that I've already had, look, I don't have much yet, but um, like because it has to be synth rock, and look, it's not going to be anything like what we've created here, again, over here, but I did sort of have a few sort of concepts here. It's not going to be... Oh, oh. Not going to be anything like that. But but um, there's that... Do you know that because um, it was what's the name of the composer that did not Robert Zemeckis he was the director but the composer Christopher oh, see I'm losing it here um, no I can't remember Alan Silvestri is that who it is the, whoever was the composer for Back to the Future someone will know it the score for Back to the Future is amazing like obviously there's the main theme but then there's the thing that goes uh, dilu dilu and I don't know what those chords are Bubba can probably help out but it's like a You know what I mean? Like the, the little tinkly, dilu dilu, dilu dilu. I'm just thinking like with a, that in a synth, like dilu dilu, dilu dilu, like just um, using those notes. So I have to work out what those notes are and uh, make sure that I'm only, uh, only not plagiarizing, but just borrowing that as a motif or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's sort of one idea around that. Um, the reason I mentioned Huey Lewis before is I kind of knew this was going to win. So the sort of songs that are in my head are kind of like the power of love. Like, dun, dun. So that's like a... Don't take money, don't take drive. Don't need no credit card to ride this train. Yeah. So something like that. Um, but obviously not exactly that. But that's kind of the vibe that we're thinking, like it's something that's kicking along. There's got some cool synths, it's got some guitars, it's got some vocals, some drum machines, some cool 80s drum machines. I think this is going to be an absolute blast. So I'm looking forward to it. Who's who's happy? I'm happy. <laughs> uh, d d yeah, put in a Huey Lewis in the news reference. Totally. It could be like too darn loud. Because did, did you know that in that scene where his band are auditioning for the for the dance, it's actually Huey Lewis that's in the glasses with the suit on, and he's the one that goes, "Hey guys, stop! Sorry, you're just too darn loud." So maybe it, maybe it's about. Oh, it could be about Marty and his band and their broken dreams. It could be a synth rock song that's Back to the Future related, but maybe it tells the story of the fact that the reason that Marty Marty deliberately ruined his own future. So I tried to sleep with his mum because his rock band was going nowhere. Right. Do a song about driving a DeLorean. It's definitely got to be a DeLorean reference in there. It was Alan Silvestri. Thank you. Uh, yeah, very, very cool. Very nicely done. Uh, <laughs> safety dance. Do, yeah, the... Hang on. You can dance. You can dance. Everybody look at your pants. Gigawatts. Yeah. There's got to be a... Why, why am I writing this down? Okay. There's got to be a 1.21 gigawatts. Uh, reference in there. We, of course, need the DeLorean, which I'll never be able to spell. What else did we have in there? That uh, for, yeah. So the Alan Silvestri um, little motif. I think we can try and like work that in there a little bit. Uh, why does this beat have to keep coming? I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> and no one is uh, no one is holding you here at against your will. I hope at least anyway. Um, uh, I'll just see if we've got any other ideas before we move on here. Uh, hola, I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, Tom had an idea because Kim liked it. Uh, DeLorean song that references Cars by Gary Newman. <laughs> That's very cool. Uh, all right. Anyway, if you have other ideas, all you need to do is throw those down in the uh, comments after this show because uh, put all your ideas there. But um, you can put your ideas about the content, but we'll be working, workshopping that in the live shows over uh, the next few days next week. So we're taking three days off. So here's the thing. We're, we'll be doing this four days a week. So this is where we're at for now. And uh, yeah, you will have to wait because we've got all of our weekend shows. We've got Your Music Live kicking off tomorrow. We've then got the Happy Hour and then we've got Garage Band Weekly. So I am still doing Garage Band Weekly. If, you, if you're worried that I was abandoning you, Garage Band fans, don't be because we've still got Garage Band Weekly coming up on Sunday afternoon and then our Creator Town Hall Sunday night to wrap up the weekend. We'll then be back on, into Cubasis uh, in full swing next week. We'll be starting to record some instruments, write some lyrics and uh, really knuckle down onto this song and have a lot of fun. Whenever I hit... Does anyone else just get really distracted by the Doogie Howser theme whenever they're playing on electric piano? Or is it just me? All right. That is going to do it for this one, folks. Uh, do, join, do tune in 
uh, after the show. Now, do I still have the, the right link in here? I'm going to throw it here in the chat again. Uh, do join in after this one because in 15 minutes time, myself, Jade Star, Doug Woods, we'll be chatting about anything you like. We'll be having a general yarn. We'll be answering your questions and you can bring the weird, the wacky, the wild. There you go. I'm too can play at this game, Jade. Bring your weirdest questions and all the hard ones, uh, Jade will answer. That's what she told me. So uh, please join us there, down in the down in the uh, chat. There you go. Jade's got it going on as well. Uh, oh, we need some great Scott. Okay, we do need some great Scott. Great Scott, and this is heavy. Yep, those both have to be in there, don't we? We're gonna. Th this song's gonna write itself, isn't it? Alrighty, uh, Desolate Morning will bring the weird. And uh, yeah, if you did have some fun today, if you learned something, then uh, please uh, do hit the like button. That helps us out. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and if you want to catch up on all the daily goodness and fun that we have around here. And uh, I think uh, Stu Cash will uh, has the, the perfect comment for us in this series. And that is to be continued. Take care of yourselves, folks. Take care of others. Keep creating. And remember, uh, it's hip to be square.